Intercellular communication refers to the interactions and signaling processes that occur between different cells in the body. These communications are vital for maintaining homeostasis and coordinating various physiological functions. As individuals age, changes in the way cells communicate can have significant effects and lead to age-related diseases. Cells communicate with each other through a complex system of chemical signals, including hormones, cytokines, growth factors, neurotransmitters, and other signaling molecules. This signaling is essential for coordinating various physiological processes. There's quite a few, so let's do a quick run through. Direct cell-to-cell -cell communications occurs through gap junctions. These are channels that directly connect the cytoplasm of adjacent cells, allowing for the exchange of ions, small molecules, and signaling molecules. Gap junctions are important for synchronizing the activity of cells in tissues, like the heart and nervous system. There are four main types of chemical signaling. The first is endocrine signaling. In endocrine signaling, specialized cells release hormones into the bloodstream, which can travel throughout the body to affect distant target cells. Examples of this include insulin, thyroid hormones, and adrenaline. Paracrine signaling involves cells releasing signaling molecules that affect nearby target cells. These signaling molecules have a localized impact and are often important in tissue growth and repair. In autocrine signaling, Cells release signaling molecules that bind to receptors on their own surface, affecting their own behavior. This can be important in processes like immune responses. There is also synaptic signaling. In the nervous system, neurons release neurotransmitters at synapses to communicate with adjacent neurons, muscle cells, or gland cells. Contact-dependent signaling involves physical contact between the signaling cell and the target cell. Notch signaling is an example of contact-dependent signaling, which plays a role in cell fate, determination, and differentiation. Speaking of the immune response, the immune system relies on complex intercellular communication to identify and combat pathogens. Cells of the immune system release signaling molecules like cytokines and chemokines to coordinate immune responses. With age, alterations in signaling pathways can occur, leading to changes in the way cells respond to these signals. These changes can affect cell function, tissue repair, and the body's overall response to external stimuli. One common feature of altered intercellular communication in aging is chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation results from changes in the production and response to pro-inflammatory cytokines. Communication between nerve cells involves neurotransmitters, and changes in neurotransmitter function can impact cognitive and neurological health with age. Neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's are linked to alterations in intercellular communications in the brain. As with the other hallmarks, I wanted to end this chapter on a positive note, on an area of research. For this, I'll be looking at Biosplice, which is developing drugs for multiple degenerative diseases. In 2021, they returned positive results from phase two trials. If therapies succeed in phase three trials, they could be released any day now. So it's a very exciting area to look into. The WNT pathway can be broadly categorized into the canonical and non-canonical pathways. In the canonical pathway, WNT binding to its receptors results in the stabilization and nuclear translocation of beta-catenin, a transcriptional co-activator. In the nucleus, beta-catenin interacts with transcription factors to activate target genes, including those involved in cell proliferation and differentiation. This pathway plays a key role in embryonic development and tissue regeneration. Non-canonical WNT pathways are more diverse and can involve intracellular calcium signaling, planar cell polarity, and other processes. These pathways are involved in cell movement, cell shape changes, and tissue polarity. The activity of the WNT pathway is tightly regulated. In the absence of WNT signaling, beta-catenin is usually targeted for degradation by a destruction complex which includes proteins like adenomotus polyposis coli, 
Axin APC and GSK free beta, which stands for glycogen synthase kinase free beta. This keeps beta catenin levels low in the cell. When WNT ligands bind to their receptors, it disrupts the destruction complex, allowing beta catenin to accumulate and enter the nucleus to activate target genes. The WNT pathway is critically important during embryonic development, regulating processes like axis formation, tissue differentiation, and organogenesis. Axes are basically just a fancy way of describing signaling pathways. For example, here we have the HPA axis. The hypothalamus in the brain releases corticotropin-releasing hormone. This travels to the anterior pituitary gland, the small testicle-shaped endocrine gland at the base of the skull. Yes, I know all the textbooks state that it looks like a pea, but it clearly looks like a ball sack. The anterior pituitary gland then releases adrenocorticotropic hormone, which travels to the adrenal cortex located in the adrenal glands that sit atop the kidneys. These release cortisol, which have a negative feedback on both the production of adrenocorticotropic hormone and corticotropin-releasing hormone. In this way, the HBA axis regulates homeostasis. The WNT pathway is fundamental in stem cell differentiation. It allows for ordinary tissue repair and upkeep, and it provides for wound healing and recovery from injuries. However, like many other pathways, it becomes deregulated with age. By restoring this pathway, Biosplice intends to replenish deteriorating tissues with the body's own cells, staving off age-related diseases. Biosplice has launched lorisivivant for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. Another drug, Dalosovat, is intended to treat androgenic alopecia, a form of hair loss. An earlier trial led to a statistically significant increase in total follicle count versus placebo. There are a huge number of drugs entering clinical trials as we speak. If you want to look at any of them, then again, I direct you towards the rejuvenation roadmap. It'll be very interesting to see where we can go from here.